this physics presentation is going to have lots of images and videos in it that are really designed to help you stick the important information into your mind uh, by creating mental images rather than just reading a book uh, actually having pictures and some slightly quirky examples perhaps they really should stick in your mind so in this video I'm going to look at some of the general physics knowledge you need to have knowledge that uh, doesn't necessarily involve performing calculations the video is going to be broken up into uh, at least two videos maybe three and in video one I'm going to be looking at refraction visual reversal and the properties of water refraction refers to light's tendency to bend as it passes through mediums of different density thinking about that as a diver the assuming we're not light diving and, and or using a flashlight underwater just diving using sunlight the sunlight is passing through air it's then passing through the water it's then passing through the glass of our mask and then the air inside our mask before reaching our eyes so it is bending a number of times this video shows refraction actually as it's happening using a laser you see the laser passing through air then as it starts passing through water it bends and that is refraction in a nutshell why is refraction relevant to us as divers well refraction causes objects to appear larger or closer than they really are so there is a note for you to make sure you jot down here's a picture of a duck that has been messed up by refraction uh, does the bottom of the duck appear further away or does it appear closer than the top of the duck well your mind will tell you what it appears to you but there's no doubt at all that refraction is affecting this photo here's another example look at his fingers reaching out for that line that diver has only just grabbed that line with his fingertips so that diver who is reaching out for the line probably thought the line was closer to him than it really was uh, and as a result we can see it again he almost missed the line he actually only just managed to get the line with his fingertips so that's an excellent example of how refraction refraction affects us as a diver uh, it causes us to potentially misjudge distances because the object is appearing closer than it really is visual reversal is a, another thing that you may be asked to question about in a physics exam it is the opposite of refraction it's a phenomenon you will often see the word phenomenon uh, in the paddy exams when they're talking about re visual reversal so what you need to know is what is a phenomenon it'll help you remember what the correct answer is so when I think of a uh, phenomenon I think about uh, the paranormal ghosts something like that uh, what I'm thinking about is the unusual happening something strange happening so when we think about it in those terms if we know that normally objects appear larger or closer underwater and this is caused by refraction when something unusual is happening when the strange is happening when we are suffering from the phenomenon called visual reversal well what are we going to expect we are going to expect the object to appear smaller or more distant uh, the opposite of refraction so visual reversal is when objects appear smaller or more distant when does it happen it happens in turbid water so what is turbidity uh, turbidity is, is poor visibility it's, it's suspended particles in the water causing poor visibility so you can see a picture on the left there showing uh, turbidity uh, fairly well the picture on the right is actually trying to illustrate what uh, might be happening to light particles as they're trying to pass through turbid water you can see that light is being scattered and bouncing all over this image it's bouncing off those little sus suspended particles in that turbid water uh, and that is what causes visual reversal the bouncing of light off particles in turbid water 
what other properties of water do we need to know about? Water absorbs light and it absorbs the red end of the spectrum more quickly. So water absorbs light starting with the red end of the spectrum. The deeper you go, the less the red and the more blue things look. Why is that? Well, red light has been absorbed before the blue end of the spectrum. Here's a couple of images that might help you remember this fact. If you look at the picture on the left there, that is uh, the swimming pool at the Pro House at Coconut Tree Divers, Rowton. Uh, and it is the swimming pool as it was being constructed. Uh, on the right, you see the finished product. And what you obviously notice is that swimming pool was actually completely white and uh, it only appears blue in the picture on the right because the light has been passing through water before uh, being reflected by the white bottom of the pool and the water has actually absorbed some of the red end of the spectrum making it appear blue even though the entire pool is in fact painted white. It is an interesting one to see the way colours change as we descend. Firstly, we can see the objects appear immediately larger due to refraction. And now, as a result of absorption, we are going to see the red end of the spectrum disappearing as these pen lids get taken deeper. The red one is the most obvious one to be looking at and seeing how that is changing. When we think about some of the other colours that contain a lot of red, going back to primary school mixing paints, purple has a lot of red in it. So if we look at the purple one and compare that, it's already looking very blue. The red part of purple is disappearing. Brown has a certain amount of red in it and we can see that starting to look very grey because the red part of the brown colour is losing a lot of its colour. And that is about as good a video to actually show the effects of water absorbing red light as we could possibly come up with. The deeper we go, the more red is absorbed and you can see the more red uh, disappears. That red one over there now is looking almost completely black as we descend down to depth. So the water is absorbing red light. Water is a great conductor of both heat and sound. This is because of its density and its elasticity. It conducts heat away from the body 20 times faster than air does. Now that's uh, a number that it will really help you to remember. If you imagine testing the temperature of water in a swimming pool, you may dip your toes into it or you may dip your fingers into it to find out what the temperature is. Well, if you think that you've got uh, 20 fingers and toes, that might help you remember that water conducts heat away from the body 20 times faster than air does. So on the subject of heat transfer, let's look at the different types of way that heat can be transferred. Uh, you've got convection, which is uh, either moving, moving air, uh, removing radiated heat from our body, uh, or of course convection could also hap happen in the water as well, moving water, uh, moving the heat uh, that we've uh, lost, uh, the heated water that we've lost away from our body. Uh, evaporation is the loss of heat through the evaporation of water when we sweat. Obviously that doesn't have any effect on us as divers. Then there's radiation, which is the emission of electromagnetic waves. And we've got conduction, which is the direct transfer of heat by contact. So let's look a little bit more at these different things. Conduction, uh, firstly. Conduction is the method of heat transfer between objects in actual contact with each other. And the picture over on the right there, the top picture, what you've got to imagine is that these circles represent molecules, probably in a solid. Uh, these molecules and as they're being heated up on the left 
they start to vibrate and they vibrate against their partners on the right which then get warmed up and then vibrate against their partners uh, on their right and so on and so forth until the whole object would be the same temperature so that is uh, a, a good illustration of how conduction transmits heat through uh, molecules being in contact with each other and vibrating against each other what you now need to do is look at that picture on the bottom and realize that if conduction happens as a result of molecules actually vibrating against each other and transferring heat that way that is why obviously in a solid the transfer of heat through conduction is very very effective because the molecules in a solid as you can see in the picture on the bottom there are very very closely packed together with tight bonds between them if you then picture a liquid the molecules are less tightly packed together and have uh, less less tight bonds and then on the far end of the spectrum you've got a gas where the molecules are a reasonable distance apart so let's now take that a step further and imagine ourselves a diver in a liquid and think how many more molecules of that liquid is that divers body in contact with than when they are in air and when you realize that the more molecules that your body is in contact with the more heat you will lose you start realizing why you would lose heat through conduction a lot more when you are immersed in a liquid than when you are surrounded by air it is simply a factor of the number of molecules that your body is in contact with so now considering convection uh, what we can see in this picture is a flame uh, transmitting heat to a liquid uh, the heat is being conducted through the base of that pan the base of that metal pan and then as the water is being warmed at the bottom the warm water rises and is replaced by cooler water and you get these convection currents well what you need to do is replace the heat source a flame replace it with you being the heat source and you can imagine that that water that your body is warming through the process of conduction is then being moved away from your body uh, through the process of convection to be replaced by cooler water that your body then heats again through conduction and it raises again and so on and so forth the final one I want to look at is radiation. It's the transfer of heat through electromagnetic magnetic waves uh, in, in air, in fact. It is the greatest cause of heat loss on the human body. But when you're immersed in water, it is the least. The increased uh, ability of water to conduct heat away from the body and the increased effect of convection mean that uh, that becomes a much greater effect on heat loss in a diver than radiation does uh, so the points you need to make in your notes are the form of heat transmission that has the greatest effect on a diver is conduction the second greatest effect uh, of water in terms of heat loss on us divers is convection and radiation has little effect compared to those previous two let's look at sound next sound travels four times faster in water than it does in air now that has an interesting impact on us as a diver uh, another point for your notes is that when we hear sound underwater because it's traveling so much faster we often mistake the sound as having come from above us we certainly don't know what direction the sound is coming from and we will often think it is coming from above us here's a graphic depicting sound moving in air and here's a graphic depicting sound moving in water what you notice as the big difference is the number of molecules and the speed those waves are moving in far less molecules and the waves are moving slower far more molecules and the waves are moving much faster and that is because water is denser 
than air and more elastic than air. That is why those sound waves are moving faster, in fact, four times faster in water than in air. And those are the key topics I want to cover in video one. We looked at refraction, we looked at visual reversal, and we looked at the properties of water. I hope you found that video useful. A lot of very important things that you might be tested on in the physics exam. Make sure you uh, made some good notes. If you're finding these videos helpful, please link to my website, www.goprocaribbean.com, on any post you make in forums about where you found useful dive theory revision notes. If you're blogging about learning to become a dive master or instructor, link to my website in your blog. It's the best thing you can do to help me in return.